Hi, I'm Anna. Welcome to another reading wrap up. This one from March till May to May. The first book that I have on the list is Twelfth Night by Molly Horton Booth, Stephanie Kate Strom, and Jamie Green. I feel a little silly that I didn't realize it was a retelling of Twelfth Night by William Shakespeare till like a third or halfway into the comic. It's a graphic novel. So the graphic novel is about V moving to a different school from her twin and she misses him a lot, but she, she's able to dress how she wants, which is like beanies and masculine, more masculine clothes. And she meets Orsino, Orsino, um, who she develops a crush on, but everyone thinks that she's not into guys. So he asks her if she can help be his like wingman to to gain the attention of his crush, Olivia, but Olivia has a crush on V. The setting is kind of like a fantasy world where there's like fawns and fairies, but the story didn't really do anything with that. I felt like that was a little la lackluster. I would have liked the magical creatures to have something more to do with the plot rather than just, they're just there. I really liked the art style, it was really cute. I gave it a three star. Next, I read The Love That Dares by Rachel Smith and Barbara Vesey, or Vesey, which is a collection of letters between LGBT people, whether it's friendship letters or romance, romantic letters. And this one I picked up because I wanted inspiration for a book that I want to write about um, a little kid finding love letters between some LGBT characters. I don't have a lot to say about this one. There was a very beautiful, one of my favorites was towards the end. Let me see if I can find it. It was by Ivan Nuru to his dad. And that was the most um, beautiful letter out of this collection, in my opinion. I did not rate this. Next, I have read They Poured Fire on Us from the Sky, The True Story of Three Lost Boys from Sudan by Benson Deng, Alphonsian Deng, and Benjamin Ajak. And this one is nonfiction and it's a really tough read. I have talked about this in a previous video where there was a chapter that really stuck in my head when I was in high school and forced to read this book. And it kind of scarred me in a way. And I decided to finish reading it to get closure. Not sure if I got closure, but I am glad that I finished it so I can be done with it and I did not rate this, I don't think. No, I didn't. And that's all I have to say about this one. Next, I read Fangs by Anderson, Sarah Anderson. And this one's a little graphic novel that has a gorgeous cover. And I almost bought it. I read it um, all in one sitting. It's, it's a really fast read. It's really short. I read it all in a Barnes and Noble while I was just looking at it. It was okay. It was silly. It was fun, but not really my kind of read. It's about a vampire who gets into a relationship with a werewolf and their hijinks together. Yeah, I did not rate this one. In my last reading wrap up, I read The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter. During March, I read the sequels The Dream Thieves and Blue Lily Lily Blue. I talked about how I was confused about the ley line in the first book and I still didn't really quite get what it means to open or awaken, awaken the ley line. So in this one we get more backstory on Ronan which is very interesting uh, and the vi we have a new villain and we always get points of view of the villain which at first I'm always like I want to get back to the main characters but then they're very short chapters of the villains and they always end kind of oh my dad came by my studio to say hi but yeah the chapters end interestingly enough we have a new villain in this one and they're looking for similar things that the main characters are searching for i don't really know how to summarize the third book blue lily lily blue except that the group of friends finally find something it's not what they expect um, but they do find something and I can't really say a lot without spoiling the first two books. These were good. I gave both of them three stars because again, th there's something confusing about them to me. Um, maybe I'm just dumb. I don't know. <laughs>
Next, I read The Wonder State by Sarah Flannery Murphy. And this one was a lot of fun. I almost gave it a four. And it's about a group of friends who would find these houses in their uh, teenage years that had like magical properties. Then a tragedy happens and they all go their separate ways except for, what was her name, Brie? Brandy. Brandy stays in the town called Eternal Springs and which is in Arkansas, which is the wonder state. She sends them a message that says you promised and so they all come back but she's missing so they have to find out what happened to her. And this was a lot of fun. I found the end was a little unsatisfactory a little bit. The reason why I didn't give this a four was because the reveal at the end is something that like it's unpredictable but in a way that wasn't very satisfying in that like you could have never guessed it like the villain did something off page and like you would have never thought that they would do that because like it's it just came out of nowhere to me yeah i don't know i wasn't the biggest fan of the ending but throughout it it was quite fun and I gave it three stars, a high three stars. Lastly, I read Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. I picked up because I had heard that it was just as good as Harry Potter or better. Unfortunately, I didn't find that accurate to myself. It didn't really grab my attention until chapter 23, which is 199 pages into the book. But basically this is about a friend group of witches and there's a prophecy that tells about a child, the Sully child, that's supposed to bring about the apocalypse. The group of friends kind of fall apart in that most of them want to protect the child and their one of the friends uh, believes in the prophecy and wants to kill the child or at least take them prisoner or something. And I can appreciate what the author was trying to do. I like the message of the book, but it just didn't... I think it was a little... It wasn't exactly preachy or in your face, but it was adjacent to that, I think. I gave this three stars. Something I forgot to mention about this book is that there are a few lines that talk about how these magical houses are more ominous than they first appear. And there's a line where a character says like, what if if somebody mistreats these or misuses the magic of these houses is cursed or is getting punished by using them in the wrong ways. And I thought that was an interesting concept. Unfortunately, it didn't really get into that concept. Um, the houses aren't as uh, ominous as we first think. And there was one scene where they go inside one of the houses and it has mirrors all on the inside, like covering every wall. And the main character, one of the main characters, she she swears that she sees her reflection move when she's not moving, and mirrors really freak me out so i was like i was like "Ooh, that's scary that's creepy um but that was the creepiest it got it wasn't really uh creepier than that throughout the rest of the book so it's really hard to see this without it glaring filming the outro on another day because somehow the footage was deleted so that's it for the video thanks for watching please subscribe and like if you like and i'll catch you in the next one bye